Okay, today what we have is a classic fish in a barrel situation. We've got a camel who can't get out of the yards. We're going to help him. G'day. This morning, Danny and I are heading out, heading back out to continue the rehab work. We're hoping to complete all the sites that are left today, and it's going to help us cover a reasonable amount of ground. So what else we're going to do is while we're out there, we've got a camera that stopped reporting at Packhorse. While Danny is doing a bit of transport work, I'll get over and I'll fix that camera up. And it feels like a camel day. And we've got some new equipment to try out on the camels. So we'll see if we can have a go with those today. So this morning we have already seen evidence of camels and fresh tracks over our tracks and wheel marks from yesterday. So there's a possibility we'll come across some more. But at the moment, we are out on the southern part of Lake Carnegie. And Danny's coming along in the tractor to come out and rip these sites. So I'm just making a path ahead to mark it up and to um, get the sites ready for rehab. So I'm just at the site now, or the track now, and grabbing out our trusty road cone for Danny. Pretty cool day. We're sitting only just below 30 at the moment. It's been very windy. So, yeah, hopefully not too dusty. So I'm up at the last site that we've got to do before the job's done and I'm a couple of k's in front of Danny so yeah I'll be able to get started and he will just swing in and do a little bit of riffing but there's not actually a lot that's going to change here. Now an interesting thing is that on the other side of this sand dunes 150 meters 200 meters is an indigenous protection area so it's a little bit of a close call for uh, having drilled here but that was um, what the the mining company decided to do so that indigenous protection area is the Lake Carnegie nature reserve and that's on the inside of our station and so it's vital that we help protect that area through the management of the feral animals and then making sure that our boot cows aren't uh, forced out onto it too much. It's the best way that we're going to be able to protect it from damage from the ferals and the pests. One thing that we really need to get the program going on is targeting the feral cats, and the feral foxes, which target small marsupials and also the native birds including a few endangered species that have been identified living in that lake area. Right, I'm just going to get the, the gear and dig this up.
a long way down to water. Well, a little bit of shovel work and it's barely noticeable that there ever was anything here. But rules are the rules and we've got to rip it up. So Danny's going to be another little while. He's going to rip it. That'll help some of these little halo fights start to grow again. But we're going to leave the bank over here because that started to grow up here. We don't want to disturb that. So yeah, it's just um, waiting for Danny now. He might be getting hungry. I've got his lunch. So. Yeah, we'll see how he goes. All right, so Danny's finished up that rehab, but I'm here now at Packhorse where the camera stopped responding. Now, sometimes it's just a matter of resetting them, but it appears that this time I've actually got another component failure. So it's a little bit of a mess in there, and uh, I've just got to pop it open to get into it, but I think I just need to replace the nano switch. Now, <clears throat> now a while ago when we first did a video we were hiding what was in there. But since then we've decided that it's not really in our interest to try and start up a business when there's already awesome companies out there like Landwatch Australia that offer ready to go solution. We, however, do enjoy our system and the way that we've set it up. It's, um, it's nice, quick and simple. Right, I found the problem and it's a burnt out wire, potentially from a lightning strike. But what I'll do is I'll tidy it up and um, replace it. That's the damage there. Now all I need to do is jump on my phone, check and see if she's up. We'll see it as it starts to tune into the tower. That's 11 and a half kilometers away. Take a few minutes, so I'll just put the stuff away, get my phone out. I've already got a text message, so it looks like we are up and online. So what I will do is while we're here, we are at Packhorse. So I'll log into Packhorse and see what distance we have. Ten point eight kilometers up to the tower. And it's got a capacity of 45 down, 56 up, uh, 37 up, which is enough. I'll jump on and check and see if the camera's reporting, if that's fried or not. And pack horses online. There we go. Great stuff. Pretty happy with that. And I can always do the picture in picture stuff, but there's me shaking my leg.
All right, really good that Pack Horse is back up and the cameras are reporting in. It appears that the local access Wi-Fi, the old UAP, Unify Access Point, has died or isn't really doing too well. But that's sort of to be expected because I've made most of this with second-hand equipment and it was coming to the end of life in enterprise settings, which it was good enough for us to get started and yeah, really start to get the comms around the station. Okay, so I'm gonna head out to the east side and just check on a couple of water points while I'm here, while Danny's driving home. So, we will see what we see. So the cattle are doing pretty well after that bit of rain and people keep asking us about what is it that they do eat out here? And I'm not gonna say they eat camel bones, but there's enough of those around. They do eat a lot of the grasses that are around, but they actually, because we're defined as the rangelands or shrublands, they eat a lot of our small foliage trees. And we'll go into it on another episode, but there's some of our happy cattle. And we'll try and go through and do a little bit of a look at the, well, foliage and grasses that the cattle eat out here. And a good friend of mine actually wrote the book on it with a couple of other guys, but we'll, um, we'll introduce you to that book because it's quite interesting. The game is on again. I wonder what's going to happen next to this guy. Okay, today what we have is a classic fish in a barrel situation. We've got a camel who can't get out of the yards. We're going to help him. Well, he's fucked this pretty well.
All right, so we've just ended the live stream. So thanks everyone for tuning into that. If you haven't seen it, jump on, it's somewhere out there. So I've hooked the camel up. I've done a little bit of a half hitch on both ends. I'm gonna drag him out. He's got a bit of weight to him, but Toyota should hold up. In the live chat, someone said, why don't you design your yard to not let camels in? I've got to grab my bit of wire. Now, we have set them up before. The head basher height. That stops the camels getting in. They'll push the yards. If you get them in there, they're generally calm and they become that fish in the barrel. That water will just be drawing them in like mad. So, I'd uh, be adjusting that float cover because that's just blowing out like mad. Problem is, this point is just a pain in the ass. Oh, not wet rounds. What if they're not waterproof? I'll dry them out. So on the way out, we've got the head basher. That generally prevents camels from getting out. Young ones can, but you big fellas won't. The young ones will hang around. And as I talked about in the live stream, from experience, Shoot the ones outside first. The boss is inside. Right. Gonna go dump this fella a little way away. And um, start my way home. Yeah. Job's too big. What have we got? It's been hanging for... Two days. Yeah, so go through it. It's been hanging yeah. for two days. So it's been hanging for two days. And now we've pulled it out after taking the kids for a swim. And yeah, we're going to trim a little bit of the fat off and we can have a little bit of a look at the meat. And as we go along, we're just going to talk about meat. So when we're going to prepare it for steak, we actually like to leave a little bit of the fat on there. Help with the flavour. Well, and also the cook. 
as well. A little bit of the pressure at this time is to get the, the meat ready and prepared for it to head off on Sunday. Because Dad's going to be here over the weekend. And Mum wants camel for the famous wine and cheese, wine and food night that Ant does each year. Well, to be clear on the term famous, it's famous to Ant. <laughs> it, it, is, it, it is a social event on... on Ant's calendar. On only. Ant's <laughs> calendar. Look at that. It is just, so people keep talking about, you know, how's the fat through it. You've got it just perfectly through it. If you didn't know it was camel, you wouldn't know it was camel. In fact, I actually, I'll look it up. Hang on. The marbling on Wagyu. No, no, no. I, I have, I saw, where did I see it? Uh, Dave Net 4907. So is it Dave? Yeah, but that's his whole handle. Yeah. He said, I think camel is the best meat I've ever had. I lived on camel for two months for lunch and dinner in the middle of Australia. So lean. And if I wasn't told it was camel, I would have thought it was beef. Yeah. Which is generally our... Sentiment. Sentiment of it, yeah. yeah. Unless you're told, you just think it's beef. Which is... Yeah, where it gets funny when people go, oh, it's too gamey, and you're like, you can't tell. You like, you didn't know 20 minutes ago. This is awkward. Right, no, I can get onto that one. This is pretty much mum ready. Yeah. I did a good job out in the field. Here we try to keep it as clean in the field as possible. But that's also, I spoke about uh, keeping a bit of fat on there for if any dirt gets on it, you can just trim the fat off. Yeah. So looking at that, so that's it, you know, spread out a little bit. And that's size comparison, although my hands are relatively small and the thickness is, is okay. But these were young. No, these were the lactating cows. Oh, these were the lactating cows. Do you reckon they yeah. were old cows or young cows? Oh, a couple of years old. A couple of years old. So relatively young cows, back to what I was going to say before. And yeah, it's just so, so, so tender. So Louise's plan is to... Not do camel wellington because <laughs> mushrooms are bad in Australia right now. <laughs> no, essentially to sear it. Uh, yeah, to sear it and to very thinly slice it and serve it with a sauce or a dip, really, like a... A jus, maybe? Yeah, a jus. A capaccio, essentially, is what she's... So we're doing, like, multiple capaccios, because the pom's doing a capaccio. Oh, a camel capaccio. So it's the battle of the capaccios. Yeah. Ooh. Mob warfare. And this shall be our steak. Well, I'm doing, cutting out a really small piece which you would use for capaccio, even though the fillet would be the best piece. And someone did mention that, you know, I'm, I'm missing out on the best bit. That's because I don't always have my little tomahawk with me. Yeah, but I also think it comes down to time. You know, 90% of the time, you're getting these camels. Like, what, these are in the middle of the day. Like, on halfway through the day on the way to a job. Yeah. You don't necessarily always have um, a couple of hours to put aside to butcher meat. Because I sent a Snapchat of the camel before I shot him to a couple of people. <laughs> I got one back today. And it was the after on the camel. And uh, it was a brilliant shot. Like just a, a headshot and it's just gone and you've got a long grey so you must have been looking down as it's gone straight along the bridge and then into the scut like into the brain and the commentary was oh mate what's up 
You've got a splitting headache, do you? <laughs> I should have seen that coming. I should have seen that coming. So as a might come as a surprise, um, I'm not the only one that shoots camels. <laughs> <laughs> There's quite a number of us and um, you know, it's guys who also do it for pet mate as well, but at the moment the pet mate market like for camel is struggling. So the the camel still need to die and the meat's getting wasted. This is just about a bit of stir fry. Oh, Basil, yeah. You're a good boy. Sit. As if Dash Hounds can sit. He does sit though. He's not sitting. He, sit. There we go. Now good he's boy. So, <clears throat> I did have a thought about the next, you know, if we do get decent revenue from the YouTube channel. And it's something for. It's a PPE shooting, and I'm not talking about a black market suppressor. I was looking at a good pair of um, ear defenders, but the problem is, you know, you've got to put them on, turn them on every time that you've got to shoot. So one of the ideas for videos we've been toying with for quite a while. And everyone wants to see it. Well, this is what I want to know. Does everyone want to see it? And what are your questions? So back to the idea or the topic is how we, oi! He jumped up and got Those out. Those bits that I was chopping up no, the No, I'm right. getting out oh. of there. I'm going to wash my hand now. Um, grocery shopping and how we manage, how we manage grocery shopping, it's our plans, the shop, um, how we physically fit it all. How we physically fit it all, how often we do it. These are a few of the questions we've had. So what I would like to know, I guess, before we go into it. Um, do you want to see it? Yeah, do you want to see it? Let, um, let us know what are your what, burning questions? Let us know what parts of it you want to see. <clears throat> so when it comes to the thickness that I like to cut my camel steaks, would you I like to want to go this? for roughly an inch. Would you like to finish this? Okay. If not, a generous inch. And then the preference is that you cook it on uh, flame. So you, we use a Ziegler and Brown cooker, which is quite good for this style of cooking because it's got enough of a burner space to actually get into the, the meat and have a decent flavor while it's burning out that fat. That's about the last stakeable. Because the rest of that, oh. Yeah, because it's. So that's another stir fry mix, that one is? Yeah, let's do that. So, yeah, I am drinking Great Northern, but it's a Great Northern ginger beer. And I've done it in preference of having the 4X, but. Once we've cooked these steaks, I'm going to be having a red wine. Um, yeah, so it's the, for clarity purpose, we can buy Great Northern bottles on Dan Murphy's. No cans. Well, no. You can buy the cans, but they're the big cans, which is all right, but I don't actually think it's particularly better off in regards to the cost. Yeah, and also small cans. Stay colder. Yeah. Where to go eat your dinner? Do you need help with your skirt? No, I drink. You've popped a button. I drink inside. Thanks, love. Okay. Do I, why'd you have to undo it to go to the toilet, sweetie? It's a skirt. Okay. Go, go sort yourself out and go eat your dinner. Yep. Right, so we've gotten this nice and hot. We've wound it up to full noise the whole time. Yeah. We're at 250 degrees Celsius and we're just gonna whack our steaks on, give them a little bit of time, and then we'll put them in the tray and then leave them to finish off in the ambient heat inside the barbecue. Oh, so she that warm. is warm. It is warm. Cheers. 
Cheers. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I thought you were going with your little... No. Your joke. Okay. I will. Okay. Because we get the staging right. Oh, okay. Continue. All right. Cheers. <laughs>